I see the Salford Reds arising. I see the Reds are on the way. Don't go out tonight unless you're red and white. I see the Reds are on the way. And there really couldn't have been a more misleading song, could there, last season. But the Salford fans still sung it with absolutely no conviction. On the way to what? The championship? Nearly. But now, oh, oh, oh wow. Oh, now. Dr. Devil's Trident is fully erect. People actually turn up to the AJ Bell. And Salford are on the cusp of making John Wilkin eat his stupid words. Uh, and I am two Salford wins away from getting a Mark Flanagan tattoo etched onto my middle class skin. Silly bet, but man, got to come through. Uh, this is Out of Your League, episode 10, available as always to download wherever you get your podcasts from at Super League. To get involved on social media, use the hashtag Out of Your League. In front of me, before my very eyes, two little devils, dirty little devils, Mark Flanagan and Lee Mossop. Lee, you're twitching. You're, you're, you're moving your thumbs. Are you nervous? <laughs> I am a little bit, a bit yeah. nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, Mark, you're always a little bit I'm always a bit, nervous, a bit yeah. Of a twitch, haven't you? Yeah. Um, who is captain, by the way? We need to get to the bottom of this because, Lee, I've asked you this before. Uh, I think I've asked Ian Watson. Didn't really get an answer. Mark told me um, when he was appointed captain, inverted commas, about two, was it two years ago, Mark? Two seasons ago? The start of last season, yeah. Start of last season. Um, that he was, he was captain. He was no, I captain. I we said were I was all... core captain. Don't be lying now okay. because there's a few cameras in front of you. Right. So what has transpired is that you, Lee, appear to be the 51% captain and Mark the 49% captain. What I'm trying to get to the bottom of, the, the crux of the matter, um, did anyone just, did they appoint Mark as captain, then think, shit, I think it's a bit of a talk and gesture. And then, and then yeah. they haven't told you that you're not captain anymore. Oh, no. Yeah, I think we're both captains, but then Ian Watson always kind of says, oh, you know, we've got great leaders at the club, or we've got a great captain in Lee Mossop, and then he kind of forgets, and then goes, oh, yeah, and, and Mark's all right as well. I kind of, I'm the, like, the next so, so have you been told, basically, Lee, that Mark isn't captain? And this is like going to be an awkward like conversation now. Yeah, well, just, just, let's just have the facts. It's about time, really, isn't it? Let's get the truth out there. I don't really know. I think it was about a bit 50-50, but a bit like on uh, The Office. is like my... Gareth Keenan, so to speak. All right, so well, assistant, assistant to the, to the regional manager. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so I'm assistant to the captain. Or is, or is sort of Mark Brent and your Neil from Swindon Branch with the the nice brown leather yeah. jacket? Yeah. So I still had an answer. We're both captains. You're, both, yeah. you're definitely yeah. both are still captains. Definitely both yeah, yeah. captains. You're like interchange captain. And, yeah, and like on, that, on yeah, yeah. captain. Yeah, B team captain. <laughs> you warm up the guys on the bikes and stuff yeah. and get them going. <laughs> Great yeah. start. Um, your nickname is Moose. Yeah. Where did that come from? Terrible story, really. Um, I'd just moved down from, um, from Whitehaven when I signed for Wigan. Mm-hmm. I was playing the 18s and the 20s coach was Adrian Lamb at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was really quiet, didn't really speak to anyone. He just said, oh, you need a nickname, we'll call you Moose. And walked off. That was it. But there's a guy called Rex Mossop. Yeah, apparently Mossop. so. Yeah, later down the line, there was an Aussie player called uh, Rex Mossop, whose nickname was the Moose. She just stole that. So I'm and guessing. Gave it to you. Yeah. That is an awful story, isn't it? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope they get better. Right, I've got yeah. a little quiz um, for you two guys on the subject, because I know there'll be a lot of Salford fans watching, listening. YouTube, Mark Podbean, Apple Podcasts. Or your local way, podcast in, provider. Or your local yeah. podcast provider. We're, with, we're in Northern Monk mm-hmm. for the last time, Mark. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The last time. So we should say thank you very much to them. Mm-hmm. Um, I very um, sort of appropriately gave you faith this week as your beer. I know you're probably, probably not allowed to have it, Lee, it's but you can take that home with you. Four. Stick it in the fridge. Thank you very much. Um, on, you know, on the subject, I guess, of George Michael, you've got to have faith. You guys have got to have faith, haven't you? Yeah. Going Belief. to Wigan. Mm-hmm. Belief. Favourite George Michael song? I think it is actually Is faith. it faith? Yeah. Mine's Careless Whisper. Lee. Sam, big Sam. Sam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of Michael, you like Michael Bolton, don't you? He's Do a favourite yeah. of yours. Big time. He had some big anthems, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. yeah, great hair as well. Yeah, similar. Um, we similar. We had Ryan Sidebottom on and said he looked similar to Michael We've Bolton. We recently found found out that he's having a hair transplant. Yeah. or had didn't one. Tell us about that, did he? No, when he was we on? asked him many times about his hair, but he didn't mention. Uh, Lee, what are you, what are you yours is slipping like? off. Sorry. So I said yours is slipping off. Have you thought about doing anything with it? <laughs> no. We, I'm going to go gracefully. Well, Zach Hardacre has promised to um, charter a flight to Turkey at the end of the season. Is he really? To get a whole load of people out there. I'll go and have some work done. Wilkin needs some stuff done as well. Sargenton's going with him. Sargenton's going. No, I saw Sarge yesterday. He said he's not. Is he not? He's not doing it. No, but I think he's, he's going. I mean. Oh, he's gone. There's yeah, gone. gone. Yeah, well, gone. You said he's not going to Turkey. Yeah, he's not, not going to Turkey, Turkey yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so take that smile off your face because it's quiz time. Okay, let's Ready? go. Ready? 
Uh, and I want to, basically, this is for the winner of this quiz should lead Salford out at Old Trafford should you guys get there. Ooh, Can we agree stick. to that? Lots of stick, yeah. I mean, Mark, if you're on the bench, that'd be awkward. That but... would be awkward, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. What is it, first, first, first one in wins? Uh, no, no, we just collectively... So, uh, questions for Lee, then questions for me. Well, you can both, yeah, both answer whatever well, you, you want. Okay. You've got to put the rules in okay. place. Here we go. What year was Salford formed? 1893. Closest one gets that. 1893 for Mossop. Closest one gets the point. 1892. <laughs> <laughs> Is a win for Mark Flanagan. 1873. 1-0 oh. Flanagan. How many championships have Salford won? Go again, Lee. First. <laughs> I've got four. Four. One. Six is the answer, Lee. It's a bit awkward from the captain, but that's uh, two points to Mark Flanagan. Zero to Mossop. How many times have Salford won the Challenge Cup? Oh, this is what I thought you meant. Um, one. Two. One is the right answer. Ooh. Two, one, Flanagan. Before wearing red, what were the Salford colours? Blue. Oh, that's a wrong, a wrong answer me. Both wrong. Amber, black and scarlet hoops. Um, still 2-1 Flanagan. There's no blue in there, was it? In 1935, did Salford have a baseball team based at the Willows? True or false? Judging by your, your face when you told that question, I'm going to say no. I'll have to go, yeah. Correct. Yes. 2-2. Two, two. Mm. We're into sudden death. Salford's Biggest attendance at a match in the history of the club was what? We don't want to talk about last season. You go first. <laughs> um, 50,000. 50,000? Are you mad? What? Ever in the history? No, don't change it. Ever okay, in the history? Well, you said it now. 25,000. 3 to Mossop. 26,470. Salford against Warrington, the first round of the Challenge Cup. I think that was in 1950. Something. I haven't got the answer there. Um, what happened to the goatee on Dr. Devil? Ian Watson shaved it off as soon as Marwan left. Did it? Hmm? True story. If you are watching and listening, you're wondering what the hell that is. It's Dr. Devil's your mascot. Yeah. He used to have a goatee. He doesn't have a goatee. He used anymore. to have a real striking resemblance to Marwan Kukas during his tenure, and then as soon as he left, it's gone. Watson. What on? Took it off. One, what on? Took it off, yeah. Nice water. Uh, the real answer is uh, John Wilkin bought it in an auction and has it framed in his estate on Niagara on the Lake in Toronto. That's good. Still 3 2 to uh, Lee Mossop. That's it, actually. That was my last question. <laughs> that was my last question, Lee. So, congratulations. congratulations. You're going to lead the team out. We'll uh, lift the trophy together, can't yeah, we? Yeah. When we do that. Yeah. Um, right, I want to talk to you about captaincy on a more serious note. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, Lee, you are, is it fair to say you, you've been inspired in your life, haven't you, by Sean O'Loughlin when you were at Wigan? Yeah. Is he, how much has he taught you as a captain? Um, quite a lot. Uh, I was under lockers for about maybe eight seasons. Mm. Um, and I think it's just the way, sort of not what you see on the field, it's the way from training. Um, away from the field, sorry. So you're there five, six times in the week, you'll be together. Mm. Uh, and it's them over five days at training, just the way he handles himself, the sort of standards he holds himself to. Um, probably that's, what, that's the most thing I took from him. No one has a bad word to say about Sean O'Loughlin, no, do they? No. Which is amazing, considering how long he's been around and yeah, how many exactly, games he's yeah. played. I think the main thing with Lockers is, I think sometimes if you... If you ever get, a, not that I've had one, but if you ever get a captain who isn't quite doing it on the field, it's mm. sort of hard to stand yourself in that light, so to speak. But he's just done it for 10 years, mm. been at the top of his game, his performance is unbelievable. So, sort of, when he speaks, people listen. What makes him a, a great leader, Mark, a great captain? Well, I played under Sean as a captain when I was at Wigan and played with Lee in the late 2000s. I think he's not always a big speaker. I think he, he leads by actions. Mm. And like Lee said, he has really high standards of himself in terms of training, his preparation and, and how, he, how he conducts himself. I think it's just the respect that players have for him because he can do a bit of everything as well. He's not a halfback that, or, or a forward. He, he, can, he, do, he morphs those two kind of areas of the game and he's, he's, he's a really tough player as well. So he's the type of person when if he asks you to do something, 
you know he can do it as well. So it adds a yeah. bit more gravitas because you, you know that the person telling you to do it can do it himself. So Is he one of the greatest? Yeah, I'd I'd think so, so, yeah, I think so, yeah. Without a doubt. I think for the last 15 years he's been the best loose forward in the game over here by, mm. and, and maybe in world rugby as well. And I, th I think he does a lot of things that he doesn't get recognition for, that when, when you're playing and we scrutinise our performances and other teams quite regularly at training, but mm. the little things that not many people see, it's, that's the little efforts or the little pushes or the little tackles or the little minute details in the game, he does really well. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't always get the credit for that. Yeah. Well, um, just thinking with these podcasts, the reason that people like them when they are good is because of insight, insight, insight. Mm -hmm. So I want to tap into that sort of captaincy thing with you guys. Uh, well, actually, firstly, when you because you played under O'Loughlin for how, how many seasons? Or with him? You were playing with him? Yeah, it'd be roughly about eight, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did he ever have to pull you in line? Yeah, he did, yeah. Go on. Um, so it was once, it, it wasn't it wasn't a bad thing. Uh, we normally always did. Uh, Recovery in the morning after a game, mm. uh, for instance, I think it was always 10 o'clock, but this one particular time, they changed it to 9 o'clock, but we'd had a good win the night before, and it was, I think it was 2013, and uh, it's probably the best season we had. We won the double, obviously, but we had a real, it was the, probably the best team Bond I'd ever, ever known. Uh, we'd play on a Friday night, everybody goes straight to this one pub, the pub would look after us, they'd lock us in, mm. and nine times out of ten, we'd just go straight from there to swimming in the morning. Mm. Uh, but we've gone home. I've just set my alarm clock for half nine, thinking it's ten o'clock recovery. I'll get up and go. Uh, and I turned in late. Uh, got called into the office. He said, "Oh, listen, you've you've cocked up here massively. You won't be playing this week." Just because you were late once. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't accumulated. Well, yeah, it was sort. No, no, it was not, nothing, oh. nothing like that. It was just a, it was just a one-off. But that was sort of standards you had at, at big clubs. There's no sort of second chances. You mm. yell to your last action and. Um, I managed to convince the coach. I said, "Listen, the, the, I, obviously I've been out with all the rest of the lads, but I need you to know that it's not because I've had a drink that I've turned in late. I honestly thought it was ten o'clock still. And luckily, uh, he believed me at the time, and uh, I think just was that lie or no, no, it was dead set <laughs> truth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, honestly. Uh, and then Lockers comes to me straight away when he found out that I was in the team. He went, "You've been very lucky there. Just make sure that never happens again." Wow. Can, can you be the captain's mate? Does it change like when you guys were put well? Lee, when you were appointed captain, Mark was appointed 49% captain. Did, did that change the dynamic with your teammates? I don't think so. I, 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 don't, I don't think I've ch changed my behaviour since I've been a captain. I think it's something that, that's given to you on the back of your actions already and how mm. you behave and your character that you kind of you have day to day. I, I, I don't think I've changed. I just think I'd act the same, but maybe speak a bit more, but that's probably something that the coach has encouraged, but I'd, I'd speak anyway. I just, I think we both, if we don't feel the need to kind of tell people to do stuff or speak all the time, but it's when, when you, you feel like you need to share what, what's going through your head and that's when you, when you do it. Mm. I think it can be sometimes people's uh, sort of perception of you can change though, obviously because you're now the captain they may not feel that they can approach you as much sometimes. Obviously, the coach will then have to confide in you mm. in certain things that normally you wouldn't get told. And For instance, at Salford, like, um, obviously last year, it's not been so much this year, but when the financial stuff was hitting and obviously Wattle had come to us both and just said, listen, this is probably going to get leaked into the press this week. And I call you into the office and our sort of team room set up where it's just one big room, everybody's in under one roof. But mm -hmm. obviously, we've got a glass office where we get called in and if the door gets closed it's an important meeting that sort yeah. of thing so that had that is like the office with Brent as well yeah, <laughs> yeah so like little bits like that so when the club are potentially in a struggle he gets us in say listen this is going to uh, potentially get released in the next few days make sure and all the players don't buy into it we still train well and that sort of thing and they can mm -hmm. be thinking because the coach is telling you these sort of things maybe that or is they're one of them now but because you essentially you become the teacher's pet, don't you? There, there is a bit of a segregation. Yeah, he's more of a teacher's pet than me. <laughs> is he? Yeah. What or Lap prefers him to me. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that right? What's that? What do you say? Sorry. What prefers you to, to Mark? He can advise to Mark a bit more. It's Mark does naturally. Mark, the door's sliding in the office, yeah. and Mark's like, oh, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 you, you, we don't need you. We'll now. have our own meeting later. Yeah, we'll speak yeah, to you yeah. later. Yeah, we'll never. Like that, yeah. A bit awkward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about Salford then, because many tips you guys for relegation. Uh, 
lo- I mean, met loads of people tipped you to be in yeah. the mix for, for relegation yeah. after what happened this season. They all said it would be us, us or London, I think. I actually watched an interview with Lee, um, which I think was at the beginning of the season that you do... Uh, I don't know where you did that one. It wasn't Old Trafford. But, you know, you do the sort of pre-season yeah. amble looking, to, looking ahead to the season. And, and Lee did say at the beginning of the season, do you know what, we, we do... And I, I know maybe a lot of clubs have said it, but we want to we want to be in the mix. We can see ourselves get into the top top five. Fifth would show that we've progressed from the 2017 season when you had a good time, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And and look, there he is the profit, mm. the profit that is Mossop. Mm. It's come to fruition. Was that just were they just words at the beginning of the season, or did you not genuinely at think no, that not this at could, all. was possible? Did it's you like, honestly think this would be honest? Honest to God, you thought this was possible? Yeah, hundred percent. I think, like you said, then a lot of you sometimes get you could interview every captain from every club and you'll get the same spiel oh yeah we want to win a grand final want to challenge cup and I think it was I can remember doing that interview and it was the week before we, we'd set our goals as a team and one of the main ones we spoke about was changing the often you get the challenge cup you get the grand final but I think mm. our main one what we've spoke about most of this year is we wanted to change the perception what people had of us as players but as a club as well mm-hmm. and uh, which was what at the time do you think how did it feel inside what was the perception so from from years prior it was sort of you were going there where if you were on your way out or when Marwan took over he was spending big on players who pro- potential pretenders mm-hmm. uh, they came in under all this hype and th- they didn't really back it up and uh, that was probably the main thing we well, were a lot of them there for a, just a payday a final payday yeah yeah I think so yeah um, and we wanted to change that perception what we had um, I came from obviously I came from Wigan and that was probably at the lowest point well it was it was the lowest point in my career I was playing nowhere near the standards what I'd set myself and mm-hmm. we all spoke about doing that we need to change the perception of people and, and the only way you can do that is win and um, obviously we get to see each other five days a week the way we were training how hard we were training Jackson had came in with Joey and the way we were running our set plays, and, and, and like I said, I genuinely believe that we could have, yeah, we could have done with, something. Without with upsetting all of the Salford fans out there, mm. um, which I think Wilkin has done on numerous podcasts. Yeah. Did, did it? And, and did, all right, did it? Did it feel like a backward step for both of you, given that Mark, you'd come from Saints and that you'd come from Wigan at the time? Yeah, I, th- I think when you're at a big club, that's probably what you'd think you'd expect if you're going to a so-called lesser club, and especially on the back of like. Lee mentioned that the reputation of Salford at the time was that they bought a lot of big names that didn't back it up and the performances on the field didn't um, didn't suggest that they were they were going anywhere and it, you know I'd, I'd spoke to Tim Sheens at the time who was the director of rugby I'd, I'd worked with him in Australia and he kind of convinced me that they were on the rise yeah. just like the song mm-hmm. um, and it was but then there was a, there's different attractions when maybe you, you leave a, a bigger team to a smaller one is is it's been part of a journey and creating something different and, you know, being more of a senior figure. So that, that's, that's an attraction as well. But, you know, I, I, since, since I left Saints, I'd, I'd watch a grand final or a challenge cup and there would be a thought in the back of my mind where I'd think, am I ever going to play in, in these playoff games or have a, have, a, have a good chance of winning a trophy again? And I think it was this season, this pre-season and the, the first few games where we had, you know, tough hard working forwards and and some really classy players and and a really good work ethic throughout the 17 that I thought you know what we could do something and, and on our day our back us against anybody anybody but I think it's it's the consistency we've had week in week out this season which is which is a real big improvement from the last few years mm. well yeah one thing Ian Watson's talked about Lee is, is keeping everyone accountable that's one of the things he said a few weeks ago what's been one of the keys to to the success this season does it does it feel like that what does that actually mean everyone being Accountable because it seems quite a sort of very straightforward thing to say, but the more you sort of peel that layer back, there's probably yeah. a lot to it, isn't there? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's probably our sort of game plan, or call it a game plan this year, has been based on it's team first, um, work hard for your mate, and as long as you do that, nine times out of ten, you'll play the week later. Uh, so, what I think he's meaning by that is there's little things that a player can do, like what Flash mentioned there with lockers that it'll only be a player who will notice it no disrespect to fans but they'll sit in the crowd and the, the won't notice these little bits such as when you play the ball and you're knackered mm. kick chase that 50-60 metre sprint or if there's a bloke stood in a tackle flying in at his legs and making sure he goes down even though it's, 
it's an extra 10 percent yeah bit of effort that collectively yeah, everyone does that yeah you're yeah and i think that's just what it is and what's up what all holds us to sort of high standards with that and it'll be the first to, on a review the day later if you haven't done that you'll make sure you know mm. and if you continue to do that you'll get dropped out of the team regardless of who you are um and like i say it's it, it's it's paid dividends yeah year. Do, you, do you have to like your teammates though i mean i know that's, that's maybe a stupid question but everyone on the outside has this image of you all there banging the drum singing Salford reds are rising but you know you don't hang out with each other you're going there's going to be people in the dressing room that's just human instinct isn't it that you can't stand but that's you've got very to get on true. i think the United team of 1999, they had players and strike partnerships. I'm not sure who it was. It might have been Cole and Sheringham or they mm -hmm. hated each yeah. other. Now, I, there's, there's, I don't think there's much of that at Salford. Uh, but I think you've got to re respect your teammates, especially on the field. Mm. And I think we do that. And I think, you know, I think 1 to 17 all turn up for each other and they graft their arse off. And, you know, we've, we've put a lot of emphasis on defence. And I think we'll always score points against teams or off like offer a real good threat to score points but mm. it's that defensive effort that's really got us to where we, we are in this in this position now but um, is that the difference though when you cross the line so you could have someone perhaps you don't get on with at all and you would never socialize with or whatever but as soon as they cross the line and you know that they're giving absolutely everything that's all you really care about and, yeah. and, and there's that respect when they're on the pitch you may not be best mates but you've got to respect each other and you as professionals yeah 100 percent end of day Joe public goes to work. He won't like every single person in the office he's mm. working with him. And we're no different, obviously. There's 25, 30 blokes. You'll have some extroverts, some introverts who don't really speak. So it's impossible for everybody to get on. Mm. Um, but as long as you have that res level of respect and come game day, you know for a fact that even though he probably doesn't like me, I don't like him. As long as he's doing that hard work for me and, and covering my backside mm. when I'm slipping up, then that, that's probably the makings of a quality. Because you've got, you've got a common goal. Like, Lee can't win the game without me and I can't mm. win it without him. So if he's slipped up and I've got to you know, cover his arse or vice versa, mm -hmm. you've got to do it. And you know, we've got you know, a great squad, a squad of players that are doing that for each other week in, week out at the minute. And there may be, I guess, I guess there may be instances of, of someone that you just can't stand when they've come to the club or whatever, but actually over a period of time, because you, 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 what I'm trying to get at is that take us inside a dressing room for people who've never been inside a dressing room, been inside that um, inner sanctum of a club. You, you um, will find out absolutely everything, won't you, about players, about personality traits. There's no, I mean, there's no hiding what you're like as a player. You, you can't be someone else because eventually it yeah. will all come out yeah. in the wash, won't it? Which is, must be quite interesting. You see people suddenly becoming them true selves in a good way or a bad way yeah. after a period of time. I think that's when you just you, you play and you, you spend that much time with each other that you know, like I said, true colours come out. But you know, I think we're fortunate this this season that we're we're all on the same page on on the field and we're mm. you know we're training really hard and we're playing some great rugby. So it's an intimate place though, the dressing room, isn't it? As much as yeah, they it's have, a great we, place as well. Like yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, even it's like that, training today, like you're having a laugh with your mates every day, and if you get a good win, you're celebrating afterwards. It's mm -hmm. it's an amazing amazing place, and the, the chemistry on the, on the field of you know winning a match that you've got no right to win and then having a couple of beers with your mate afterwards when you yeah. can talk back and there's a camaraderie and there's there's something and there's an intangible bond you've got there that you know you can't replicate in any other walk of life I don't think it's in a sporting arena when you you, you push your bodies that far uh, and and you 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 create something or, or you build a legacy like potentially winning a grand final it's something mm. that that you can take with you for the rest of your don't life. Don't jinx it, Mark. Don't. That's, that's, that's what I was saying too, as well. About as well, wasn't it? Like I, I hate game day. So my worst thing yeah, about being, being a professional rugby player is the, the time leading up to games. I hate it. I get that. Hold on. Do you say you, which? What do you hate? Game day or the time leading up to? Game? The leading up to the game. So right. obviously I love the game. Right. But the time leading up to that, that's my worst bit. I get dead anxious. anxious. Uh, yeah. I'm sweating. I'm having to time all my meals, so you have to eat at certain times. What's that all about then? Where does that come from? Nerves. Yeah, just nerves. It's I think most players are like that. To, for a, especially for a front row, I'm going to get battered for 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and again, so on the flip side of it, so the leading into that game day, I, I despise, but that immediate 20, 30, 60 minutes after a game, that's mm. that's the pinnacle for me. When you've just had an unbelievable win, you're absolutely knackered, you can just lie back in the dressing room, have a beer with your mates. That, that's, that's the all, be all and end all for me. And I think when you... You, you hear players who potentially struggle when they retire mm -hmm. and it'll often be that's the thing that they miss the crap with the, the lads mm -hmm. uh, and just that feeling after when you've just put your it's a bit over the top to put your body through well but it, it's 
It's well, it's interesting because I, I read stuff about you. I know you've had numerous shoulder problems and reconstructions and so on, but I read something that years ago you used to um, cry. Or you cried in the toilets yeah. before a game. Yeah. Is that, that becomes all part of what you were just saying there, is it? You know, part yeah, of that. that it, is a lot of it to do with your part with your injuries? Yeah, that was all my shoulder. That, that, to be fair, I, I'd kept that. I didn't even tell my wife that. That was something that I was doing an interview last week and that, that slipped out. That. Um, do you slip it back in or do you want to elaborate? Yeah, on? That, that was a. That was at the worst. So, like I said, when I mentioned then, when I was at Wigan, mm. uh, it was just it's just one thing after another, or one reconstruction after another. Um, I think it was 2013. Like I mentioned before, it was probably the pinnacle. Mm. Uh, we'd won the grand final. We won the Challenge Cup. Uh, I was playing against Australia. Uh, sorry, won the Challenge Cup, and then I was playing against Australia in the World Cup. Mm -hmm. uh, I was one of the players. The NRL teams were coming in and signed for Parramatta. Um, and it just everything, everything just came to a head. Um, I'd already had three or four uh, surgeries before that, but yeah. then I had some real big ones hit me all at once. Um, I was actually on the stag do actually. Uh, I'm a good mate at the time, uh, Scott Taylor, who's at Hull, uh, decided he wanted a little wrestle with me on the bus, and we, we slipped through the seats. So I popped my shoulder out. What? And you stagged it? I'm a stag do, yeah, just as I was about to fly out to Australia a few days later. So well, You said mate at the time, you don't speak to him anymore. No, no, still good mates, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, worked out well for him. Um, so I had to have a big up then, I think it was seven months I was out. Came back. So hold on, this was before you flew to your stag do? Yeah, yeah. So you, did you go on the stag do? No, so this was on the bus on the stag do. Uh, right. this, this was my home when we'd been to Vegas with a, a few of us and then uh, we went round the lakes. Yeah. Like it was a bus of 60 of us and tag decided he won a little wrestle and that was at the end of the stag do that was the just kicking off that was on the way actually yeah but you uh, see so carried on with the stag yeah the it, he, he, <laughs> he said i said you can put it back in for me you put it out so he pulled it back in for me Did he? <laughs> yeah um how painful was that that was yeah well it was not as bad as on a game i was full of drinks so it wasn't too bad <laughs> but yeah so that it, everything just come to a head so i had a big seven month fop got to australia all i wanted to do was impress my new teammates mm. Uh, I was out for seven months, uh, finally got back, played two games, my other side dislocated, I was out for another seven months, wow. came back to Wigan, played half a season, I had to have another uh, reconstruction, that was four months, came back and played a few games, I had to have another, and it's just one thing after another. Do you think like you were going to quit? I, I'd 100%, I'd got it in my head, so it was about, I think it was 2015 and... Um, yeah, I was in, I was in a, I was in a bad way. Um, my shoulder were knackered, all my nerves were gone. It, 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 it's hard to put into words. What it, it was like, my shoulder didn't belong to me. Mm. Like I wanted it to do things, but he just, he couldn't do it. Um, and I was going into games, I was literally petrified. I just, I, I wasn't thinking about, I want to play well against this guy this week. It was just, I hope my shoulder doesn't dislocate. And it was just this one instance. It was at my lowest point. I just. I was in the tour and so I just started sobbing. I think, what am I doing here? I, I can't do this any longer. And uh, the week later, I went home to my missus and just said, you know what, I'm, I've had enough, I'm going to retire. Mm. Um, and luckily she convinced me. She just said, well, give it a couple more weeks, have three more games. If you still feel the same, then. Was this mid-season or towards the end? No, this was mid-season. Yeah. Um, I just said, I can't do it anymore. I can't keep up myself through it. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of tormented in my head. And she convinced me otherwise. I had to then have another shoulder surgery. I had a scan that he, he was knackered again. I had another reconstruction, and uh, that's when I went and met Ian Watson. Um, me and the coach at the time, it was Sean Wayne. Obviously, he wouldn't have been happy the way I was playing. I wasn't happy if I'd fell out of love with rugby. Um, and I met Ian. What I was surprised anybody wanted me at the time, the way I was playing. And he came in. He went. I, I, I know what you're all about. I've seen enough of you. Um, I reckon with our medical team we can get you back to the way you were so I went on sports with Missy I said you know what I don't I don't want to um, and she said well why and I just said I don't like rugby anymore and she said do you not just think that's because of how it's been mm. uh, obviously you've been for three four years now you've been had the worst luck you can imagine and I said you know what then I, I'll sign one year so sports I, I was dead honest with Ian Watson I just said um, I fell out of love with rugby but I don't know if I've fell out of love with it or it's just because of the struggles I've been through. So mm. I said, I'll sign one year. And he said, well, that suits us great. Uh, and literally now I, I couldn't be more happier that I've not looked back. Um, you, you played really well that first season as well, didn't you? Yeah. That was six, then again, 16. Yeah, that was my first year, 16. I started off really well. Luckily, signed a three-year deal. 
then the week later my shoulder went again. Oh. Uh, the back of my shoulder, that was a big one actually, the back of my shoulder, the bone came away, so I had to have a big bone graft off my hip. Uh, and then since then, uh, our f I wanted to give him a mention actually, our physio, Rob Artinstall, mm. um, I mentioned last week, he's been able to do something that no other physio's been able to do and he's got me back playing and he's got me back where I'm confident in my shoulder again. My shoulder sort of feels like it, it belongs to me and I just think <clears throat> a lot of that was just with he doesn't have this ego so there's obviously you can have physios who they'll look after the full body but he looked he he said I'm not going to pretend that I know more than anybody about everything he said there's a, a lady in uh, in Liverpool who, who just does phys uh, shoulders so I went and saw her and she said yeah basically I can't believe you're still playing she said I've seen blokes who have one two reconstructions after retire mm. so she said I'll, I'll, I'll shake your hand for that but she said basically all your nerves are Knackered, you've had that much trouble over years. Yeah, is that is that mainly? Is it just from big impact? No, it, it was the dislocation. So rather than a lot of the time when I was dislocating my shoulder, I'd need the surgery. You almost go in three days, to whatever it is later. Mm. But I was always wanting to finish the season, so I'd rehab it for a few weeks, then play again. Probably dislocated again, rehab again. So it's the stubbornness again. This, over the years. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, he's just saw, and and again that I, I saw it as a weakness. That's why I didn't really open up about it. Who drilled that into you, Sean Wayne? It'd be a big part of that. Sort of my dad, the upbringing he had. Um, Sean Wayne, Mike Maguire. Because it was just, look, get out there and do it. Yeah, yeah. it is what you You're a piece of meat when you play rugby. Mm. Yeah. You are, aren't you? You're, yeah. you're a slab at your shoulders are fucked as well, Mark. Yeah, well, yeah, we did, um, yeah, I did I'd shoulder surgery summertime to Lee. I mean, mm. I've only had one, which is nothing compared to Lee. But, you know, I've, I've seen how hard Lee works and I think he's... You rehab every day. And after a game, I didn't know this, but you rehab it after a game. Yeah. So, so when you've done 40, 50 odd tackles and it's mm. in bits, and it's you have to rehab it to kind of get the the nerves and the, and, yeah. the, and get it stimulating again. So, so after a game, that, he's pissing about with his bands mm. straight after before you get the, the bands down. Yeah. That was what that specialist found. Yeah, so because the research, oh, I don't want to bore you, but if you have a, a, an injury that's longer than twelve weeks your brain starts to flick to a different nerve route. Mm. So I'd obviously had six, seven years of reconstruction after reconstruction, so mine was just using the wrong one. Uh, so she said, as soon as you've done a game, you need to go home and do this, and it, it keeps your brain from going back to the old route. Yeah. Uh, and touch what it's worked for me. Well, isn't, that, isn't that fascinating? Because, that, I mean, the psychological effect that that must have on you, still before a game now, you know, still before you play Wigan on yeah. Friday night, do, do you still, does it go through your head? Obviously, you try and not think about it, but it must just be there and you've got to get those thoughts out of your head. Yeah, it does, yeah. Um, I, to be fair, it's, it's the more so away from the game where it has the effect on you. I, I was... I was coming a person that I didn't like, so to speak. Um, like I say, then, that, the time when, when I cried and my, my missus, can, she can tell within a two-minute conversation if my shoulder's bothering me. She said, it's doing your head in again, isn't it? And... I'd sort of done years and years of trying not to look weak. I'd ask the club, don't release it, that I'm having a reconstruction. Mm -hmm. uh, just say that I'm going to try and get back. And then obviously because the season... it, it looked like a weakness where you thought people would you know, try and get you there, target you there or what? No, just because it looked like a weakness to me. Obviously, I, w I was doing it that often. It was becoming a bit of a joke. Or Mossop's dislocated again or Mossop's having another shoulder up. And, and I covered mm -hmm. it and I, I bottled it all up for years and years. And I was always the bloke. If you go out for a drink, I was always the jolly one. I'd get on with everyone. Mm -hmm. I was... This and that, and then a um, bit of a nuisance. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Uh, and like I say, it got got to the point where I I just came to Salford and um, we'd had we'd had a few drinks and somebody again just dead light out. They, they started taking the mick out of my shoulder, wh mm. whatever calling it, digestive shoulder, what it was, and and like I a snapped. digestive biscuit. Yeah, mm. yeah, and I just snapped, uh, and I lost my rag with it and. I can remember as soon as it happened, I instantly regretted it and I just thought, why, why have I lost my head like that? It Wasn't that Mark Flanagan who called it a digestive biscuit? It was actually, yeah. Yeah, he was biscuit one of two. Yeah. Mark, now you've heard this, this story, you know, it's quite an emotional story. Do you feel... Yeah, do you feel bad? Do you feel bad about it? Slightly bad, yeah. Lee yeah, can hold, like his, say, Lee can hold nothing, his own. It was nothing he'd said anyway. I'd had it, 20 blokes have called me over the years, but mm. it's just a, At one moment. a cumulative of Crescendo. years of hiding it and not you wanting to be weak. You George Griffin in the face, apparently. No, 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 was it? no, nothing like that occasion. happened. Yeah, no, no. Um, yeah, <laughs> it just it just came to an end, and like I said, then I 
I didn't like the person I was becoming. I was never that violent or not that I was violent that night. <laughs> but it just built up and it built up. And it yeah, didn't. massively. Yeah. It just took his big toll. And, I, and uh, he was probably only in the morning. There was our GB, our conditioner, he's, uh, sort of, he's been around the block a few times. And he was the one who said it to me. He said, do you not think you're, mm. you're thinking about your shoulder? He said, you've been through a lot. And I said, do you know what it is? Um, but yeah, like I said, we're two years down the line, I've had no shoes and I'm happiest I've been with my rugby. Does, does that make this all the sweeter, what's happened this season? 100%, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. To get here now, to be enjoying, my, just more so to be enjoying my rugby again. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel like I'm a, just them lessons I've learned, that, that Matt, it was just a struggle for years and years and I just think to come out the other end, that's probably... I've won a couple of cups, luckily with Wigan, and I think this is by far my biggest um, sort of reward I've ever I've got is just by by still being here. Yeah, I mean this this is what from the outside it seems to me that you guys have all got your own incentive. There's a lot of guys at Salford who've come like you guys from bigger clubs, inverted commas, and have been there and done it, got the t-shirt, got the ring. You don't get a t-shirt, do you? Just a ring. Should ring. get a t-shirt. Ring's, ring's good enough. Yeah, ring's good enough. Um, but do you know what I mean? You've got those guys. Yeah, we've who, all got our own stories. And, and then you've got the younger ones yeah. who, who will lean on your experience for it. And that lots combined is yeah. quite a powerful thing. There's loads it? of different ones. There's a lot of lads who've kind of been discarded from other clubs or, like I said, on the way up. And it's probably more so than any other team, I'd say, in the comp. And um, I think it's it's probably made you the player you are today. It's that those experiences of, of winning stuff, but the lows make, make you appreciate the highs as well. And you know we've got some senior players that have they've been around the block a little bit and they've got those you know that advice to and those experiences to, to lean on when it gets tough and you know I think that's going to be one thing we're going to need on Friday if we're going to beat Wigan mm. but it sounds like you want to keep going having been at a point where you were like you know I've had enough of this you, you want another contract you want to keep playing yeah you, that's what it you, was you've got the love back for it yeah yeah it was almost like when you're playing there you're almost counting down or and we'd often joke when we'd be knackered after the game when we'd joke oh, I can't wait to retire um, but now it's sort of the other way I was I want to just keep going now. Um, mm. The only, probably the only ever issues I've had is my shoulder. So, touch wood, I, I stay stay clear away from them. And yeah, I love it again. Just being around the boys, winning, obviously makes it a lot easier. Mm. Um, and yeah, to like Mark mentioned at the start, just to, to write our own bit of history with Salford would be amazing. Well, Mark, uh, you know, I'll throw this one out there as well. Probably a little secret. I don't know if I should do it, but I'm going to do it. Well, I'll sabotage. Well, we'll, well we can edit it out if you don't like it afterwards. Um, you know, you, 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 a few years ago, were like, I've had enough. I'm done. Mm. I'm out. I remember we, do you remember we sat on the beach, Formby Beach. We might have been naked. Uh, you might have rubbed might some, have had some, some oil something. into me. Um, but we were there and we had a pretty serious conversation. You were just like, I'm done. I'm yeah. done with it. I was actually at the time, yeah. When you know, I was at Saints uh, in 15 and I was in and out of the team a little bit. And um, yeah, and I knew they probably didn't want me. And I was, what, 27, 28 at the time. And yeah, I. I I've, I've had times when I've, I've had enough of rugby and you know when, if you're not playing getting big minutes or you're not in favour or you're not playing well and you put your press, the pressure on yourself like Lee says on game day and, yeah. and it's, it's not a nice experience being that anxious and nervous before a match and I was getting like that but then not enjoying it not having the goal at the end of it and I didn't there wasn't many there was interest of solver but I didn't know where that was going to go and I kind of half thought well, what's, what's the point I'm not enjoying it as much as I used to I'd rather be happy doing something else than just forcing myself to play rugby, and uh, yeah, we did have some honest, honest chats that I might, you know, knock it on the head. And you know, incidentally, there's a, there's a player in, he plays for Manly, a halfback who was a superstar a couple of years ago, Ken Elgi, and he's retired at 26, 27 because he's he, he's lost the love of the game. Mm. Um, but I think you've got to probably you, you you take advice at those times. You probably lead it off off his missus Chloe, and you know, speaking to my close friends. And you and, mm. and my my mm. wife and family, Good. and yeah, that probably you know they said, oh, just maybe see what happens at Salford and and see how that goes, and just you can always, you know, give it six months or a season and then see how you feel after that. Mm. But there were there was times that you know probably when you you think you're playing at your peak when, you know, if your head's not in it, even though your body's probably you know at its best, if your head's not in it, then you know that's a different matter. Well, that for my my advice for what it was worth was was and again from someone, sometimes you have to take advice from people completely out yep. of your world and it was that you can you can't come back to it and you guys probably because it's so intense what you do every day even though you do fuck all really you, know, you turn up from your training you've got most of the day off yeah. go back to your little coffee shops don't you yeah. one in Oral one in a couple in Manchester yeah. we'll get to that later yeah. um, but but no you're, because you're in this bubble the whole time 
uh, it's so intense and you just think, oh, you know, I'm, I'm fed up with it, I can't do it. But you guys are 30, 31. 29, 31. Are you, are you actually 29, 29 Lee? 29, 29, Did yeah. you change your Wikipedia to be 29? So Somebody you get any changed contract? it to 30, I'm actually 29. Because you, at Salford, you, you can't get a three-year deal, can you, if you're over 29? That was the real deal a few years ago. Yeah, that's what yeah. I just told Mark. Yeah. So if we can, so we, basically, if we edit your Wikipedia, yeah, that's fine. They're not going to check anything else. So yeah. they'll, they'll just look on Wikipedia. That's fine. We'll do that later. But do you know what I mean? You can, you can uh, feel so wrapped up in it all, so entrenched in it all, that... You need someone to just say, look, it's now, you've only got a few more years left of this. And you'd, you, would, you would have regretted it, Mark, wouldn't you, if, you, if you'd quit? Yeah, I would have done. But, what, yeah, when you're in the moment, and it's, it's not like a normal, like a, an everyday job. It's, you can't, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's not just a nine to five. You can't switch off on it on an evening. And the way I've, I've never been the best player, but I've always been one of the hardest working, I think, and, and I've put everything into it. I'm really passionate about it. So I can't go into a game or a training session and be half arsed. I can't, I'm either all in or nothing. Mm. And that's what I was thinking at the time was, was whether I could emotionally invest all my time and my effort and my thought process to rugby if I wasn't enjoying it. And you know, I'm glad I have done now because, you know, we've, we've had some ups and downs over the last few years at Salford, but, you know, we're in a great position now, you know, this week. Let, let's talk about the club a bit because we do, probably do need to clarify, or maybe I do need to clarify, unless, otherwise I'm going to start getting some death threats from Salford fans. Mm. Um, it, this, this is a club, even from our little quiz, which was, was fun, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, there's a lot of history at that club. It's, yeah. an, it, it's a great... The original great. Red Devils, apparently. Yes. That yeah, Manchester actually, United stole off Salford. Yes, I heard that. Mm. Um, but there's, there is so much history at that club. Um, and you go back to sort of like pre-war times and so on. But did you guys did you guys play at the Willows against Salford? I've played I against did, yeah. them at Salford. I mean, what, how do you describe that place? I only went down there a few times, but what what an atmosphere! What even just walking down the streets past the pubs to the I think it's similar to a lot of the old fashioned grounds, like maybe Bellevue and um, the Jungle in Castleford. Those older grounds, they're a little bit dilapidated, but the atmosphere because they're so close to you, mm. and I think the great word, thank you. dilapidated. Yeah. It's good for me, isn't it? Yeah, um, it's like my body at the minute. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, they're so close to you. I think the fans used to revel being in those, you know, those environments and those stands, and they'd have a few beers with the mates. And the fan, the songs, and the chants used to reverberate another good and uh, around the stand. And it was just a really good environment to, to play rugby in. And you know, AJ Bell's a great stadium, but a lot of the noise gets lost. But the old-fashioned grounds, it'd, it'd stay in there. Yeah, it, it, I mean, is it is it too harsh to say that the club almost like Sell Sharks as well? They kind of had the heart ripped out of the club when they moved from wherever they were at Haywood Road. You've got to go with the times, though. Like, got to go with the times, yeah, but, but, there was, but that, that seemed a moment where it was just like, you know, if you, if you look at it on the basis of it, you're moving to a, to a stadium, which is a, all right, a great rugby stadium, but where it is, um, the atmosphere and so on, it's, it's no great surprise that it's going to take quite a few years to build it back up again. But, to what but it was did, I'm, sure, I'm sure it was a gift from the council. So yeah, Salford Council. Twelve, they moved there, I think. Wasn't yeah, it? They, they paid for it and said there's a 15,000-seat stadium yeah. not far from the home of the Willows. Yeah. You know, How far is it? A few miles, Trailer. I think, isn't it? Yeah, is it? Well, yeah, about three, two, three miles, aren't you? Isn't it? Echo. Yeah, something like that, yeah. yeah. So it's not far, but, you know, I, th I don't think in the modern day of Super League, you know, with your corporate hospitality, you know, getting fans in, being um, en engaging, inviting for, for new fans to, mm. to go and stand in, a, you know, the, the willows as it was then, is, is all that inviting. Whereas, you know, there's, there's so much you can do with new stadiums these days that financially it was it was more of a, an attractive proposition. I mean, it's been obviously great for you guys playing there this season. 2017, there, there was some real atmosphere there as well. But so, for example, last season, you were the lowest supported club, an average of 2,748 mm. through the gates, um, almost 2,000 down on the previous year from, from 2017. There must have been times when you were playing last year when you just thought, what the fuck is this? When you turned out and just thought, what, you know, we're putting in all of this, we're putting our bodies, our shoulders on the line every week and we're not being appreciated, especially when you go and play away at big clubs and see it. Look, it's all come full circle and it's all good, but that yeah. was a tricky time, wasn't it, last year? Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Um, I sort of, without being a kiss-ass, I thought mm. I, look, I look at it the other way, I just sort of appreciated them 2,700 or whatever it was. Up. Yeah, still turned up week in, week out. Obviously, we weren't performing the best, so for them to keep on coming out and spending, spending their hard-earned money, it meant a lot to us. And, Sort of again, one of the things why we, we did work so hard to try and change it around, and um, luckily we did. And I d what is it this season? Uh, I'm not sure what it is, but it's definitely up, isn't it? Yeah. They're, they're a noisy and passionate bunch as yeah. well. Yeah. I think we have one of the best away supports as well uh, in, in relation to the home support. So 
Yeah, the bigger weekend, percentage weekend of away fans are actually ho- go to home games as well at Salford than most other clubs. So it sounds electric. I, I, I watched the Cast game on Sky, yeah. and the noise that came across, with the atmosphere is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I get yeah, how, how the, the transformation and it builds into the whole conversation we're having of what has happened is just every, everything is probably maxing out, isn't it? Yeah, and and just at the right time, more importantly. Yeah, there is there's that massive feel good factor about about Salford at the minute. Yeah. We had our uh, presentation on Saturday night, and Did you win um, any awards? Lee? No, just missed out. Yeah, most improved. Did it? Yeah. <laughs> you um, I didn't even get clubman this year. No. Yeah, no. nothing. But again, it was it was sort of it was a real community feel to it. So we, it was packed out with just fans, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, everything just seems to be going right at the minute. And it's a great place to be. Um, on to the, that game then. Um, you had your first trip back, didn't you, to the DW? I would have thought you'd yeah. been back a few times. So that was your first one yeah. last week. Yeah. Second trip back. Uh, what was what was that like? The, the emotions must have been going mental through through your head, and uh, you know, the place where you started, the place really close to your heart. It was. It was weird. Um, Luckily, when I, when I first left Wigan, my first game was to play them in the friendly at our place, though. But like I said, I'd never been back to um, the DW. I, I, I kept getting injured before we were meant to play there. Um, so to play there, it was, I'm just glad it's out of the way, to be honest. Um, it's an unbelievable stadium to play at, especially when it's, when it's packed out. And the way we, we, um, we travelled with our fans, it was unbelievable. And it was a, it was a, proper, it was a proper game. So those are different dynamics as well. Dan Sargent's and obviously joining you guys. Jackson Hastings joining them. It's yeah. Quite strange, isn't it, to have yeah. those things going on? What, what did you learn from that game that you think now that because because you, you were in it when you were in the game, you didn't get yeah. swept aside. What did you learn from that that you thought you know what it gives you the confidence to we go then? We said this afterwards. Um, you know, we had a little Ian Watson addressed the team after the game, and you know I think we we kind of we felt more confident after the game than we did before it because you know we'd just gone out there we'd. You know, they'd throw on the t- kitchen sink at us and then we'd fight back even more. And then I think it was just a few silly errors and complacency with penalties that really cost us. All the hard work we did, I think we, we showed that we could break them down with the ball. We created lots of opportunities that we nearly scored or you know, on another day we, that we might have got a bit of luck and got over the line. Lee was yeah. Midge's dick away from scoring. Um, Mid- so Mid- Midget's dick, did he say? Midgey. Like a little midget. midget. Or a midget, okay. yeah. yeah Either. I don't think you'd say that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so there was loads of opportunities where we would we, we, so close to scoring. I think, you know, this week with the same preparation, the same attitude and, you know, a few less errors and I think we'll be in a really good position. What, what kind of a coach is Ian Watson? What, what, because what makes him tick? What gets him fired up? How does he fire you guys up? Go on, Lee. You're his pet. <laughs> <laughs> You're both his pets. Um, is he that kind of guy? Is he? Is he the get? Is he, I mean, look, you've played in the dressing room with, been in the dressing room with Sean Wayne. Yeah. How different is it to that? Um, he's just real enthusiastic with everything he does. So whether that's a training all the week, he, he's just very, very loud. Um, but he also, I think he just puts a lot of trust in his players. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it wasn't that long ago he was still playing, or he says he was anyway. <laughs> um, so. So the way our the way we play this year is, is around Jackson and Tui, getting them on the ball, um, with your middles. It's, do these things you'll play next week, and it, it's just it's a bit cheesy, isn't it? But you guess you're just playing with a smile on your face and expressing yourself, not just that five drives and a kick sort of speak. Mm. Um, but under, under the coaches that you've played under before, and you know you, you've you have, do you have to connect with your coach to have a successful team? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, you do. So, um, I mean, obviously, you guys have done with being this this season. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. It's massive. Obviously, if you don't, if the players don't trust in the coach, it, it, or the other way around, if the the coach isn't trusting his play, it'll it'll never work. Um, and then it's sort of when when the losses start coming, that's when the cracks will start to show. But were, were there times last season where that trust started to um, disappear a little bit? Not necessarily. No. It, you'd, it'd be easy to think why it wouldn't. Um, the way we were playing, we just weren't. I don't know what, what for whatever reason, we just weren't. You just didn't click, did it? We weren't clicking. We weren't gelling. We weren't doing the things that we we practiced unbelievable all week. And we think, yeah, we, we have to be at these this week, and we we get banjoed again. And mm. sometimes you just can't put your finger on it. But yeah, I, I think he's really good at understanding his players as a, both as people and on the field, and think 
he, he, he manipulates the game plan to suit the, the players' assets. So, you know, one week we might go through the middle of a team and he'll get all the forwards carrying all, he'll, we'll play wide so, and, and spread the ball a bit. But it always suits the players on the field. I think he understands the players' personality and characters as well. So, you know, we can have a bit of a laugh and a joke with, with Lee and I, but then there's some lads that he might act slightly differently or treat them slightly differently. But that the end result of that is those players play play to their potential. Mm. You know, some lads you can't hit with a stick because like they won't respond in that way. Yeah. I think Rob Louis was a good example. Robbie was, you know, he's quite emotional in lots of ways, in, in a good way as a player. Uh, and he'd take him under his wing and he'd get, get the best out of him because he knew he could cuddle him and... and, and, and not massage his ego, but like get the best out of him by, you know, telling him how good he was and, and, and reinforcing th those values. Whereas he might not do that with a different player because it wouldn't be the right approach. And, and coaches have different ways of getting that, have yeah. different ways of metaphorically hitting you with the stick, don't they? I mean, like yeah. compared to Kieran Cunningham, for example, how drastically different is his style? It was a few years ago when I worked with Kieran. Um, but I think Watto's people skills are better. I think, um, whereas, you know, he, he's. He likes being around the lads and having a joke and a laugh, doesn't he? And sometimes... Does he join in with you on those yeah, socials? He, yeah, he does, does yeah. He? yeah. He likes have, being around the boys and, and being one of the lads, but he also, you also know when the time to work and the time to train and the time to put your game face on. Um, but I think having a laugh and a joke kind of... It puts down them barriers a little bit, so lads are more likely to open up or... You know, he's more likely to get the best out of them because, you know, there's, there's not like a wall in front of him that's, mm. that's them and us. And in terms of um, actually, you know, because you guys aren't from Salford, you don't have any, there's no reason that you should have any real love for Salford apart from playing for the, for the club. Obviously, that comes the longer that you stay at the club, doesn't it? But he's a Salford boy. He's played mm. for that club on a couple of occasions. Yeah. This, this must mean so much to him. Oh, yeah. He's so passionate about the club, isn't he? Yeah. He does everything. He'll, he wants to know everything that's going on, that, whether that's the chief exec, the players, the conditioners, every single facet of the club he wants to be involved with because he wants the best for it. And, you know, it's probably watching Salford as a kid or be, being around that environment that, that's kind of pushed that, you know, side of his, his character. Mm. Are you going to say something there, Lee? Are you going to chip in? No, I was just going to say that that probably goes for the, the rest of the staff as well. Yeah. Um, like we've got a lady there, Tracy. She, I think she's been at the club for 35 years. What does Tracy do? Everything. She so if you need extra tickets, you go to Tracy. If you're not being paid right, you go to Tracy. <laughs> it's, it's literally... She, and it's, it's people like that that they just breed that passion for the club. And so you've got, if you have a core of, you've got Tracy, Bleasy, Watto, um, Dave Clegg, they've all been at the club for years and years. And so they've they've seen it at its worst and they're now hopefully going to see it at its best. And um, it, it is, it's a great place to be. And you'd have to be soulless, wouldn't you, not to see how much it means to the people who yeah. have been there oh, from you, the beginning. You, even like presentation now, I've seen the fans after a game, you know, it's, you know, the amount of joy you can put on people's faces by having a good game of rugby and getting a win is, you know, it's priceless. And, you know, they're, they're so passionate, the Salford fans, it's, it's, it's been great to, to, you know, to give them that feeling this year. Let's just dream for a little bit. And I know this is not what Ian would want to do at all, <laughs> but mm. say you beat Wigan, mm. get to that final, Old Trafford, Mm. Both been there before, um, and you put thirty points past Saints this season, didn't you? Mm. I mean, you would absolutely. I mean, you, you, from from now, from two games to go, you will fancy this, won't you? Because it seems to me that this is all, this is the biggest day. I mean, compared to the Wigan Grand Final and the Saints Grand Final that you played, this would be bigger, wouldn't it? Given the the context of it all, I'd say so. Yeah, I think it would for me. Yeah, uh, when you're at clubs such as Wigan, it's it's expected. Mm. Um, this would be the Leicester City of rugby league. Yeah. Yeah, you're meant to be there. You're there every other year or thereabouts. But to come from where we've been, so I've I've been at the club now three years, and to to be there from where we've been and what was going on behind the scenes and off the field at the club, I think this would be yeah, this would be un this would be massive. And personally, I think for both of us, like you know, you've had your struggles with you know injuries, and you know there's times when I've not always enjoyed it. And I think when you're playing a great side, you're you're part of the team, and you don't always have as direct an influence on, on the end result yeah. and you know being as you know core captains and having a massive influence day to day and, and being leaders is is yeah. something that would be of great significance for me I think yeah I think it'd be more rewarding wouldn't it yeah it'd be yeah. a lot more rewarding because you, you know you're directly involved with it mm -hmm. well next week's going to be interesting because we are going to be at Old Trafford again mm. for the press conference for the grand final 
Cool. Which will be good, isn't it? If you we never might see you again. Might be there again. I, yeah. I, do you know what? I hope, Mark, that I, that we're not doing a podcast with you on the twelfth of October. Me too. Because <laughs> that will mean that you're going to be in a grand final. Yeah. Um, but I don't know who we're going to get. But three forty-five, we're going to be doing a live podcast of Out of Your League, twelfth uh, of October from the fan zone, uh, and there's going to be a Northern Monk beer bus there as well. So. Oh, lovely. Plenty of incentives Great to come down. It's, re- it's really good beer. Come down. If Mark is there, throw stuff at him, shout abuse at him. Um, and likewise you. And likewise me, I'm sure I'll get plenty of that. Lee, great to have you in. Um, what a story. Much. I hope you guys, it all works out for you. And um, yeah, even just, I mean, look, if, it, if it doesn't, it's been an incredible season anyway, hasn't it? Mm. But let's not hope it ends there. Uh, available as always, out of your league to download, wherever you get your podcasts from, at Super League on social media. Get involved. Use the hashtag out of your league and we will see you naughty little devils next week.